What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you acting out? You stop as soon as I turn the camera on, huh? <laughs> Why are you such a baby? With the baby. With the baby. Oh, my allergies are kicking in already. Good morning, everybody. It is currently 11 a.m., so it is still morning. Uh, today is Tuesday, some day in March. Uh, the night, Tuesday, March night. My dog, you can hear his little jingling jangling, is wallering on the floor. I finally got a rug in here and he's very happy about it. But today I thought I would do a stash tour because it has been a minute, quite a minute, since I've done a podcast and I have a no good reason for that. I just have been struggling a little bit with podcasts because they're really, I don't know, formulaic, I guess. And I think I just really enjoy doing the more casual vlog style something or other like this. But today I wanted to do something fun and pick up the camera and go through my stash. I will flip you around and I'll show you the studio slash yarn room, craft room thing. I call it the studio because its main purpose is my studio. But I'll show you what we're gonna go through today. All right, sorry about my sniffles. Like I said, allergies. Uh, thank you, sir. All right, so it's a bit of a mess because I did not really clean before I started filming this video, but we are in the doorway of the studio and oh, overview, general overview is this. Um, this is my giant pile of trash that I really need to take out. So just ignore that, but it needs to go downstairs like yesterday. <laughs> I have more recycling that needs to go out down here. <laughs> yeah there's also a closet over here and my tripod for filming that I may or may not use today we live in a super old house so the floors are super old and creak so if you hear any of that that is what that is this is not a studio tour video oh, suitcase is just laying on the ground I had to go in there for something but I did want to give you a quick overview so you know what we're looking at why did this why did I do this did I do this for a reason? I didn't even notice that was like that. This is my artwork table slash ball winding station. I keep my Swift there and I attach it right here and then I keep my ball winder over there. Besides that, this is like a workstation. Usually that cutting mat is up here, but I had it on the floor because I was cutting pieces of fabric for a project bag that I'm going to start working on. And it's also where a bunch of crap accumulates like I have cakes here ready to go for a project coming up, as well as here. I caked up another ball of yarn. These are not started yet, so technically they're still in stash, but this was the mystery sock yarn from the sock squad, Farmer's Daughter Fiber Sock Squad in October of last year, and I'm going to make hibernation house socks with that and with this, which is Barocco Ariel in the color birch and then these two are going to be a giant snail crocheted snail stuffed stuffy it'll be my first stuffy i'm very excited about it they're both um malabrigo yarns but look how beautiful aren't they going to make the best snail i think so and but this is like where all the little cuttings end up whenever i'm like caking up yarn eventually they go into a bigger pile that i have uh i store up all of my little cuttings and stuff to use to stuff something eventually. I figured I can use them as stuffing for something. Then I have my new project bag from Woodsy and Wild here. I love her bags like so much. And this was one of her Valentine's Day bags and it is beautiful. Look at these dragons. I love them so much. But I completely frogged a sweater and have all of the, I can show you if I can, 
pardon my reach. Uh, I completely frogged a test knit that I had done. It was my first test knit and my first completed sweater since I had taken a hiatus from knitting and then picked it up again. And it was just so beautiful, but didn't fit me. So I'm frogging it and I'm gonna actually knit it again. So I have that ready to go in there. It's uh, Echo View Fiber Mill, their Ranger Merino. It is incredible, wonderful yarn. And this bag, I finished a project and I have stuff in here to put away before I put the bag away, but that's my new Hamilton bag from Paisley and Gold Sewing. But anyways, this boy is hanging around. The real uh, highlight today is this, my stash. The stash was supposed to live entirely on this uh, Ikea Calyx shelf, uh, but has, as you can see, migrated. It's uh, spread out a little bit to other areas in the studio. Yeah, this is an overview of the general stash, and I'll go into detail here in just a moment. But first, I think I'm actually gonna show you what's over here. Over here, in this little tray, I have a basket that I have some Rowan felted tweed in. I made, I did a knit along with my knit group uh, via my local yarn store, and we did a Fair Isle hat. And these were the colors I did my Fair Isle hat out of. And there's so much yarn left. This is a DK weight yarn, and it actually knits up really beautifully. Uh, but I just haven't put it away because it fit in this basket and I just left it there. So that's where it lives now, I guess. But then these, pardon the label on this one, I got it wet. But these are the first two months, January and February, the Mystery Mushroom Club from Coast to Coast Yarn Co. This is January and this is February. And aren't they beautiful? I went ahead at the beginning of the year and bought the entire year. So I have those to look forward to every month. And I got the, the cashmere sock base. And oh, oh my God, I'm so excited. I have decided that I'm gonna pick four or five of these once I get them all in, and I'm gonna make a big old striped sweater. So I'm really excited for that. Okay, so first of all, my stash is getting a little large <laughs> at this point, but I do wanna say that I have projects in mind for every skein of yarn on the shelf. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll address this basket. Boy, what are you doing? He hears something outside. Our windows are noisy. I can hear people talking out there. So if you can hear any of that, I'm sorry. All right, let's get into this, shall we? We'll start over here because this is the more hodgepodgey sort of shelf. This is mostly like display yarn. This here, this bucket, basket, crate, that's the word, this crate, has my advent yarn, there we go, I had turned autofocus off, has my advent yarn from this past year in it. I have my Chasing Rabbits Fiber Co. advent here on this half of it. It's two advents in this back bucket, but this green one over, all of these greens, is my Chasing Rabbits Fiber Co. advent, and it is so beautiful. I was contemplating making a sweater out of it, like a really nice tonal striped sweater, but I think I might actually make a blanket out of it because it's just so it's just so good. And this one, this pink one over, this is my Woolberry Fiber Co. advent from this past year. And it is also a lot of fun. I think I will make a sweater or something out of this. That's not in my immediate cast on brain space. So that's where it lives for now. Up here, we have two skeins of yarn that actually aren't technically my stash anymore. I have this skein of Hawthorne from Knit Picks, and it is this really fun, like pinkish purpley color with some tan. But when it arrived, it was pretty, but it wasn't exactly my taste. So it goes with this one, which is a Bad Sheep yarn uh, skein. This is her sock base in the color Rose Gold. And it is beautiful. And I bought two of these, this one, and there is one on my sock shelf, but I bought this one to give to my friend so that we would each have a skein matching of rose gold. I thought of her when I saw it and I wanted it myself. So I bought two and I will be sending both of these to her so that she can enjoy them and give this one some love since I don't think it'll get it from me. And then this is my mountain, my tower of Nutidin, uh, Nutidin, Nutidin yarn uh, from 
I'm not going to pronounce it, but it'll be down below. This is my first order order of Nutidin yarn. It is so beautiful. It is an unspun uh, Swedish yarn. Oh my God. This was her Jan January winter colors. I don't remember, but I ordered five cakes or plates of this beautiful gold color and then one each of these gorgeous blue colors. Like look at the colors in this one to use for a sweater. And then she gave me these little extras as bonuses and I am just, oh, it's so beautiful, so beautiful. I don't want to buy more until like I've used it and I know exactly how much I love knitting it up, but her next collection is also so beautiful. So I'm gonna have a really hard time holding back on that. The last thing on the shelf down here is my basket of sock contrasts. This is something that I just recently accumulated. And these right here actually do not belong in this basket. These are specifically, I'm trying not to get my toes in the shot. Uh, boy. <laughs> Uh, these are specifically, were purchased at one of my local yarn stores to be a colorwork pair of Christmas socks. Uh, but they, my sock yarn shelf is getting a bit full, so I moved them over to live in this. But this basket is just contrast colors for heels and toes for socks. And I have been accumulating budget yarns for this. I have been accumulating some sock yarns that aren't part of sock sets, but I love my contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs. So I have... Five skeins here of the onion yarn, the onion nettle sock yarn, and it is a merino with nettle fibers as the uh, strengthening fiber in them instead of nylon. I love the idea of not having nylon in my socks and they're beautiful, so I got those. I have two little balls, I don't, I don't know what these, the shape of yarn ball is called, of Arweta classic sock yarn. And then all of the rest is Knit Picks uh, Stroll fingering. So I have a bunch of solids, um, the regular Stroll fingering, and then a few of the tweeds over here. Like these four are tweeds. So that is the newest, that was the newest endeavor for my accumulation in my stash. I felt I was missing some contrasty bits. So, all right, now also, uh, all the minis that I have in my stash, a lot of them I want specifically to use them together. So I don't want to break up the sets to use in socks. So that was my solution. Down here is my bits and bobs basket. Here we go. Get this bad boy out of the way. And then put you back in the basket. This is mostly a uh, large worsted weight, like these things of partially used wool and cotton and lots of cotton for uh like practical home good things. like all of my lily sugar and cream cotton for dishcloths and pot holders and all of my like crochet thread stuff like that is all down there i have a couple of random uh things like this scattered about like this cone back here of cotton that just doesn't go in the basket and down here, I have some more crochet thread hidden in the back. But in general, stuff like that goes in there. And then, while we're at scraps, I will talk about this little basket here. This is my general scrap basket for DK and worsted weight and bigger yarns. So I have leftovers from socks and uh, my Halloween sweater, stuff like that. A hat. This one's actually a chunky weight. But yeah, that's where all my little scraps of heavier weight yarns goes. And then this is my scrap shelf for sock weight yarn. So I have all of the leftover bits from working on pairs of socks or sweaters, fingering weight sweaters. I have enough here in many of these to make a whole second pair of socks, but have not gotten around to it yet because why would I make a pair of, a second pair of socks in the same color when I could just grab a new exciting color and knit a whole new pair of socks? It's a problem. That is it for my scrappy bits. I also have downstairs a bag, like a, like a tote bag with my um, cozy memories blanket in it. And some of this, oh, I lied. 
And some of the scraps like these end up in the Cozy Memories blanket. These are my fingering weight tiny scraps. Too small to fit in that thing, but also either like duplicates of ones that made it into the Cozy Memories or ones that have already been in Cozy Memories and I'm done with. Uh, I can also use these for heels and toes and cuffs. So I guess on the big shelf we will start somewhere like up here and just kind of work our way around. So here we have a bowl, this beautiful amber glass bowl that I got at a flea market back in South Carolina. Uh, we have a skein of cornbread and honey yarn. Uh, this is her fingering weight base in the color Crash My Party that I... It didn't arrive looking like how I expected it to look. So this is currently in D stash, so it's sitting up here. Along with a future cast on, like a re like immediate future cast on, I have plans for a decadence blouse from Fable Knitwear. I have a couple of skeins of this Playful Day uh, Surrey base in the color Dove. And then the beads to go with it. This will be a beaded top. And I have these beautiful like opalescent size six beads, glass beads. Gorgeous. And then underneath here, I have a bunch of minis. These are all the road trip minis from Woolberry Fiber Co. From her road trip game that she did. I'm going to be making something out of all of those together, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Then next down on the side, this is all heavier weight yarns. So I have had them organized into sweater quantities and then miscellaneous yarns, but sweater quantities have bled over a bit, as you can see. I have one sweater quantity up here. These two together are going to be my Christmas sweater for this year. And they are Wool of the Andes from Knit Picks in the colors Larch Heather and Oyster Heather. And it'll be a big color work sweater. And I have more in the back, back there. I have enough for an entire sweater, big old sweater. And then over here is where I had accumulated a bunch of my miscellaneous like worsted weight stuff. And this is cotton, uh, what kind of cotton? Oh, it's a Drops Paris cotton, a worsted weight cotton. And I have a variety of colors because I had made one of my friends a wrap out of this gray and then bought myself a whole bunch of other colors because it was very affordable and I could not resist. And I think I may end up using all of them together to make a blanket at some point. And then I have a couple of, like this is an old cotton, uh, twisty red and white sort of color that's just a mess. I should probably de-stash that. And then I have a chunky weight skein from Made by Haley Bailey in the color Birch that I bought specifically for a hat. And then also, oh gosh, uh, this one is technically a worsted weight, but it looks like a heavy worsted weight. This is from Flower Hill Fleeces. This is an undyed yarn that is part partially alpaca and partially wool from her sheep. Uh, she owns a sheep farm here outside of the city where I live. So this is from one of her little baby sheeps and I loved it and I bought it and I will probably make a hat to gift out of that one because I don't really wear black hats. And then down here is only sweater quantities. I have a massive sweater quantity down here of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the color Storm Cloud because I was going to make a pitch coat and have since decided that it wasn't really bringing me joy, so I decided instead that I will probably be making Brad a sweater out of this, but I'm not certain which one yet. And then I have all of these different colors here are meant to be a sweater quantity together. These will all, these are all a chunky weight uh, from Knit Picks, uh, Wool of the Andes Bulky from Knit Picks, and that will be a striped cardigan. And then I have splurged on a sweater quantity of Coast to Coast Yarn Co. Her Worsted Base in the color Ad Astra. And I am gonna make something really special out of that. I love it, it's so beautiful. Like do you, like can you even? It doesn't even look as orange on camera as it does in real life. Like it's looking really washed out, beautiful. And that's it for my heavier bases. We. We don't keep a lot of heavier bases here. <laughs> I recently tried to tried to start accumulating a few more sweater quantities in these. Like all of these were pretty much accumulated uh, Christmas or later because I wanted some sweaters that I could work up faster than fingering weight. So there we go. All right, next column over here, we will start at the top, I guess. All of this here is fingering weight. This one is also fingering weight. I mean, both of these, I've already discussed this one. 
but this was originally just the fingering weight column and now it's spread out <laughs> but here we go this is sweater quantities and this is miscellaneous i had bought these two uh katahdins this one is in dark parchment and this one is in nori i had actually bought this is also katahdin but this is one of their um if you go onto the miss babs website you can buy katahdins in the full hanks or you can buy them in like normal size hanks or you can buy them where they just have like odds and ends bits and of miscellaneous yardage and you can buy those for like really cheap so i bought this one to be a contrast color with this color the dark parchment i don't remember the colors of these so candied pecan and then i'll i'll have to reorganize after i finish this video uh and then i bought this color this is the same same deal uh as a contrast color to go with my nori one of these was going to be a Sora sweater, and I think I might still do a Sora sweater. Um, and the other one was going to be a ooh, Weekender light, but I am not certain anymore uh, if I'm going to do that. But this is color is London Town. This color is beautiful. It's like orange and red at the same, and like brownish at the same time. So beautiful. And then we have a sweater quantity here. This is not fingering weight. These are uh, Surrey. And then I have these three skeins of fingering weight. These are from Coast to Coast Yarn Co. You're gonna see a theme here. I have a ton of her yarn. This is the color Button. And I was gonna make a 80, vintage 83 sweater out of these as the main color. And then these three Surreys from Farmer's Daughter Fibers for the contrast stripe collar stripes. I probably won't tell you the colors of everything in like the miscellaneous stuff, but uh, I guess I can for sweater quantities. These are all uh, Odang from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers, her Surrey base. And the colors are uh, Salmonberry, State of Mind, and Dirty Little, yeah, Dirty Little Dandelion. So those are the three colors I chose. And things are falling. We'll go here. I have three skeins of this. This is also uh, Coast to Coast Yarn Co. And this is her color, Lightly Toasted. And look how fun. It's like a toasted marshmallow. It's got browns and blacks all in it and grays. Speckled like a burnt marshmallow. And then here I have a sweater quantity from Traveling Yarn. And you'll see this color again because I'd placed quite a large order <laughs> when I placed this order. But this is traveling yarn or less traveled yarn, the color uh, Motherwort. And I bought a sweater quantity of this because I loved it. The last two sweater quantities up here are actually recycled yarn. This is a ginormous sweater quantity of uh, land, oh no, it's just wool. It's just marked as wool. She only knows the wool con content if it says it on the tag of the sweater that she frogs. But uh, these are from, her business is just called Recycled Yarn and she frogs commercial sweaters, like vintage and thrifted trash commercial sweaters and she re, re uh, skeins them up for you and provides this beautiful, ethical and environmentally friendly gorgeous yarns for the most amazing prices like you can get a sweater quantity for four like between 35 and 55 dollars and it's 100 percent wool it's gorgeous this one here is also recycled yarn but this one is linen it's 100 percent linen and it's this beautiful like dark orange color and i actually bought a contrast oh gosh where are you sticking oh it was in the hole i actually had bought just one ha little hank of this pearl soho field linen in the color silver thistle just to use as a contrast with this because i like having a contrast either like a cuff or this i was actually thinking about doing stripes so those are all my sweater quantities of fingering weight if we go down here we have our miscellaneous fingering weight yarns most of these i planned to make into shawls or hats or uh, fingerless mitts or something like that we have starting at the bottom right I guess we have some Brooklyn tweed all of this down here is Brooklyn tweed we have a couple of Peary's here this red and white I meant to make color work finger uh, mittens 
like Christmas mittens for myself, uh, which I will do once it comes time for Christmas knitting again. And then these I bought together, Loft and Peary. Uh, not with a specific project in mind, but I bought them when I bought this one because I had bought this. This is more Loft and I made a colorwork hat out of this. And I wanted to get these as well because I couldn't decide at the time which ones I wanted to use to make the colorwork hat. And I chose this one. So these may end up being a colorwork hat at some point. We'll see. Then I have the rest, I believe. Except for this one, the rest is hand dyed. This is a uh, Pearl Soho linen quill and the color is calendula orange and I am in love with this color. I've actually been contemplating either buying more of it or buying more of this linen quill in other colors and using this color with them to make a color work sweater. But we'll see how that goes. Ooh, my back. Give me just a moment. I'm gonna pull a chair up. Now we have these three. This is mother wort, same as this uh, sweater quantity up here. When I placed the order for that, I bought also a skein of this color. I believe it's called Olive. Yep, Olive. And then Mallard. And I wanted to use the three of these together in a shawl. I just loved the three of them together in a single project. Then I have these three are from Gavriella Makes. She did a mystery yarn club at the end of last year and they were fingering weight. Each one is a naturally dyed merino. I think it's 100% merino. Yep, 100% non-superwash merino. And these are the three colors that came uh, in the club and they are gorgeous. I'm definitely gonna be using them together. There's this really fun red, which is like the perfect red that I love. And then this like variegated one. So much fun, so much fun. And so soft because they're non-superwash. Then we have these two from Coast to Coast. These are from her Ratchet collection. They're called uh, That's My Peach and Edmund. And I loved them together. I needed them together. And when they arrived, they look, they look Christmassy, don't they? Like candy cane -y. Big Little Yarn Co. Big Little Yarn Co. had a collection recently of like Japanese food themed colors. And these I specifically bought to make socks out of. I really wanted one pair of socks with, this is the main color, this is the color onigiri, and this is the contrast, which is a uh, tamago, and then this, a pair of socks in this color, which is tempura, with tamago as the contrast color for that one as well. But I've been on the fence because I think the three of them together would make a beautiful shawl or something as well, or maybe, I don't know, even a sweater. Not sure. Then we have my most recent acquisition. We have here, we have some yarns from Long Dog Yarn. I guess the floor is just where these things are going. So these are from her winter collection. This was uh, her new colorway, Ain't Plat About It. And I bought it with, it, as a pair, with this color, which is Heritage. But then realized I thought I wanted the red, which is called uh, Lost Mittens. I thought I might have wanted that one with this one instead. So I bought it. Now, I'm not sure what I want to do with them. I have a couple of single ply uh, sock yarns. This is uh, one that I got in a D stash from uh, Stitch Together Studios. These two from Coast uh, Cornbread and Honey. They're both called Snake Plant. Single ply, gorgeous. Uh, I think that's it for my single plies. Uh, I also have this one from uh, Cornbread and Honey that is 100% merino, so we'll probably go into a shawl or something. It's called Daffodil, F Daffodil Fields, which is difficult to say for me. Uh, I have this one from Coast to Coast Yarn Co., which is called uh, Hint of the Woods, which is just so beautiful. I really want to make a small top out of this, like a like a crop top or a ripple bralette or something. And then last, I have two skeins of Hickory Lane Fiber Co. This is her color Toasted Marshmallow. I'm pretty sure this is the color that put her on the map. They're actually really beautiful. As you can tell, I kind of have a thing for almost white colors, like mostly whites with speckles of other colors. I'm tempted all the time to buy even more than I have and talk myself out of it. Because I have like, I have this, I have these, I have these. I have more sock ones similar. Yeah, 
that's what that's what we got in the miscellaneous shelf. We're gonna scoot right over here to these next two shelves. These are technically my DK weight shelves. I have some lace weight on here, as you can see, and this is also normally where I store my needles. But I just didn't, I don't have a lace weight shelf yet, so I didn't know what to do. Oh wait, I completely forgot the shelf. I have this bowl down here, this carnival glass bowl. This is full of minis. Uh, miscellaneous minis that came with my recycled yarn orders, and then I have like some just plain red colors from uh, the Knitted Wit for uh, heels and toes for some Christmas socks that I uh, was planning on making, that I'm still planning on making. Um, these are also from Recycled Yarn. And then I have this like mini set that I got from Cornbread and Honey. That's a really beautiful fade. I think that's it that's in there. I think that's all that's in there. So yeah, these are actually uh, available for heels and toes and cuffs, but not a ton in there, as you can see. Now, back here, we have our DK weight shelves. Uh, I'll actually start on the bottom here because this is easier. These are DK weight sweater quantities. I have one of King Cole bamboo cotton, which is absolutely incredible. I really love this yarn. I love working with plant fiber. I made an entire sweater out of this one and it is a leftover here, but all of this white, this orange, and these golden skeins down here, those were meant to be a sweater together. This is more recycled yarn. This is uh, another 100% linen. This is almost the same color as this one, this beautiful, rich, orangey color. It's a little more muted, and it's a DK, or I think this is actually a sport weight. So it is, it is different. And then here, I have recycled this beautiful, like, khaki or uh, green color, army green color, and this is 100% lamb's wool. And it is a Jahonkin monstrous sweater quantity. And then the last sweater quantity down here is DK Weight uh, from Explorer Knits and Fibers. This is from her uh, Italy collection, and I just love these three colors together. This color is Azzurro, this is Limoncello, no, Fresca, and this is Balsamico, which is this like beautiful, like look at those together. Oh my god. I'm gonna make a rock pool sweater out of the three of these and I'm gonna color block it. I've already planned out how I'm gonna color block it and it's gonna be incredible. I'm so excited. And then up here is my miscellaneous DK. In the very back there, I have some little bits and bobs. This is We Are Knitters, uh, the cotton, the petite, no, not the petite cotton, just the cotton. There we go, the cotton. That one that I just had my hand fell down the back onto the floor, so. There's, there's an untouched skein. Uh, some extra cotton that I keep around for like home goods things, like similar to that. But this stuff is way softer. I've used this, I've pretty much only used this stuff to make uh, produce bags that I take to the grocery store. This is Premier Cotton Fair. It is actually 52% cotton and 48% acrylic. So it is really sturdy and I love my grocery, my produce bags that I made with them. And then over here we have, down at the bottom, we have a bunch of Brooklyn Tweed Arbor. And I say a bunch, I have four, four skeins and probably a bit. I think I have a bit down in there. And this is what I made my Widelinger pullover out of. And this is how many skeins I had left over. So I don't know why they told me I needed so many skeins when I did not. Then I have here these two along with some extra bits in the back. This is the same um, yarn that I showed you in that bag over there, that project bag from that sweater I frogged. These were the extras. And I was going to use these scraps with these two colors to make a pair of uh, Tiffany Lynn house socks. The, but this is Echo View Fiber Mill, the Ranger Merino. So I'm not gonna pull those out. And then this is one of the Mystery Sock Squad sets from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. This is a DK weight. I'm gonna make a pair of slippers out of these. And I have two skeins down here of Spin Cycle. These were my first skin spin cycle yarns and they are so much fun so much fun these are a light sport weight that lean fingering weight so i think i'm gonna make use these in socks with some of this down here and then i have this sock set which was the mystery sock set from christmas from coast to coast yarn co i didn't get her big advent but i got her christmas day advent and i chose dk on a whim but look how beautiful these are so incredible. So these will be a pair of like house socks too. The last two skeins of yarn I have over here in DK weight are also from coast to coast. 
and this is the color Wharf. and oh my god look at it and then the other one is a uh, table for two this is from her um ratchet collection as well keeping some miscellaneous skeins like this around for hats or house socks is just oh so good so good that's that for dk weight miscellaneous skeins i have some lace weight skeins over here these are all a uh, comma rose midnight sole which is a mohair alternative kind of uh, it is baby alpaca, tinsel, and marinold. I'm not sure what marinold is, but I know tinsel is a plant fiber. But they're really soft and fluffy, and I love them. I try to get alpaca instead of mohair because uh, mohair can be a bit uh, aggravating, and I have pretty sensitive skin. Oh, also, this brand uh, is out of Ital based out of Italy, and they have a really good focus on uh, ethically treating their animals and getting their wool from sources where the animals are treated really fairly. I wanted to keep some around to use as details in socks or you know if anything ever needs a contrast mohair like in the pink velvet sweater something like that then I could have some around for that. The last shelf on my yarn thing is my sock yarn. This is a sock sets and sock individual skeins that I bought specifically for socks. All right I think what I'm gonna do I think I am actually just going to like pull these out one by one and show you because this honestly is where my heart is. This shelf right here. Sock yarn is my weakness. Buying sock sets is my weakness. First things first, yesterday I got a package in the mail and in it I got this, which is from Barnyard Knits. This color is incredible. I actually recently won a giveaway on from Barnyard Knits and I was very excited and I bought Several skeins of sock yarn, but I really wanted this one and she happened to be sold out when I went to place my order. So recently she restocked and I bought it anyway because I needed this color. It's called Speckled Eggs. And this like lilac lavender like thing that's happening here is totally my mood right now. So that is an acquisition from yesterday. And then also my Woolberry Fiber Co. pre-order came in yesterday from her Winter Wilderness collection. And I got this, which is just a skein of Frozen Lake. And it has these fun like bright green pops in it. I didn't get the sock set of that because I didn't like the contrast color she had with it. But I think I'll be okay. And then I got an actual sock set from her of the Into the Woods colorway. And it's just a really neutral one. Then, what do we have? What do we have here? This is one of my newer sock sets. I got my Greatest Hits order from Sorella in. I got the Billy sock set, which is from her Hocus Pocus collection. And I got, ooh, Mrs. Patmore's Kitchen, which was from her Downton Abbey collection. And I think I have a type. <laughs> like, look at those. They're similar, just one's green and one's purple. We have another Sorella yarn here. This is Gingerbread House. This was one of hers from her Christmas collection. This was one of my first sock sets here. This was from the Italy pre-order from Explorer Knits and Fibers. And this is the cheese themed one. Uh, Parma and Formaggio is the contrast color. Recently got this beauty from Playful Day. It is one of the most subtle and intricate colorways I've ever seen. And I'm in love. Perfect for spring. I have this sock set. This is the Great Smoky Mountains sock set from Little Lionhead Knits. Little Lionhead is Knits is one of my favorite yarn dyers, absolute favorites, and her sock yarn is the softest sock yarn I've ever worked with. So I love buying her sock sets when I can. I actually have a sock set from her in the works right now. And then I have this one, which is the Great Smoky Mountains, and also happens to be near the top here is the uh, Dutch a Dutch courtyard sock set. I may have to pull this one out soon because this one's been around for a minute and I just finished a pair of socks this morning. So then here we have uh, getting getting Hugo with it, which is from Long Dog Yarn. This is one of the skeins I bought with my Barnyard Knits uh, giveaway prize. And this is actually 50s twist. So it's two different colors twisted together, 50 gram uh, skeins. And oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's Lakeside and Beach House. I'm getting really excited for like spring and summer now. I got this beautiful color from uh, Essence of Autumn with this one. And the colors are October and Allium. October is the one on the right. Very beautiful. And Allium is the one on the, well now it's on the right, but left and right. Here I have Holly Press Fibers. I have her uh, 
Excessively fond of a cottage sock set because I could not resist. Look at that. I got the Long Dog Yarn Knit Two Together collab sock set, and these are 250s. And I got a project bag with them that is currently downstairs. The colors are Lightning Bug and Firefly. This is another Sorella sock set. This is Salem from her Halloween Hocus Pocus collection. And it's got actually two 10 gram minis twisted together for the contrasts. Uh, this is the skein of, ooh, here we go, rose gold that I got from Bad Sheep Yarn to match my friend Oh, I will switch hands here. I have this Sweater Weather sock set from Woolberry Fiber Co. This one is from West Green Loft Yarns, her Label got a little smooshed, but I think it arrived a little smooshed. West Green Loft Yarns, she's based in the UK, or they're based in the UK, and this was the mystery Christmas package. And it come, came with a mystery sock set and some like goodies, like stitch markers and such. And I was, I opened this and wasn't sure how I felt about it. But then the more I looked at it, the more interesting it was. Like with these browns and all these speckles, I ended up really falling in love. And then, oh, this is a newer sock set from Playful Day. I ordered this with that other, uh, that other skein I showed you. This is the pecan, lemons and pecans uh, sock set. And just look at that. Look at how many colors are in these skeins of yarn. This is the first and only skein of yarn I have from Waven, Ravenswood Fiber Co. And I was so pleased when I got here. It is so pretty. And the color is Rituals. I recently got a 50 gram skein of Very Vintage Christmas from uh, Tiny Human Knits. I have actually been trying to get my hands on a skein of this since before Christmas and could never get a hold of it. And finally did. We there. We made it. Started at the bottom, now we here. I have from Long Dog Yarn, you can tell who my favorites are, dye, dye or wise, but I have this color. It's called uh, Parisian Mist and oh my god. I have a fairy tale pumpkin from Barnyard Knits. I purchased this one before I won the giveaway. I have this one from Barnyard Knits. This is Lighthouse Point, and I purchased this with my giveaway winnings, and I purchased it specifically for Brad. And then the last one I got from Barnyard Knits, I purchased with my giveaway winnings plus some. I got Painted Lady, and this one, is so interesting. It's very like French Renaissance to me. These two are from Long Dog Yarn. She really is one of my favorites, but these two were bought as a pair. And I bought these specifically because I've been trying to do better about buying sock yarn, not just for myself, but also for Bradley because, who's my husband, by the way, uh, because I just knit socks for myself and he would like to have socks too. So I bought these specifically with both of us in mind. I knew he would really love these colors and I love these colors. And since it's two whole uh, hanks of yarn, I can get two full pairs of socks out of them easy, no problem, with some left over, I'm sure. But the colors are terracotta and blue ridge. Here we have a coast to coast sock set. This is her clear blue morning sock set. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Just, oh, so good. The last Woolberry Fiber Co. sock set is actually the first one I purchased from her. And this is her uh, White Sands National Park sock set. It actually ended up looking really similar to her Sweater Weather sock set that I got. I'm pretty sure the yellows are the same color. But... I have a type. I'm not upset about it. I just have a type. I have one skein of This Is Cornbread and Honey yarn. And I'm not gonna lie, I really like this color, but I mostly bought it for the name. <laughs> it's called uh, Sunshine on a Cloudy Day, and I just really love it. That's exactly what it looks like. It's like a storm rolling in. I have a couple more long dog yarns here. This one is from her fall collection. This is called, oh no, lies. This is from her Outlander collection. And this is called Fraser's Ridge. And I bought it at the same time as I bought this one, which is a fall color. It is called Falling Back. This is a Desert Vista Dye Works sock yarn. This is the colorway George, which is named after George uh, Strait. <laughs> and I could, how could I say no? How could I say no to George Strait yarn? I just couldn't. It's so pretty and I love him. He is the king. So then Holly Press Fibers, I bought this. Uh, it's Princess Bride themed. It's called Cliffs of Insanity. And I bought it specifically to be Christmas yarn 
This is my most recent purchase from Cornbread and Honey. I bought this at the same time as I bought that other one that I mentioned to you. Look at how beautiful. This just, these oranges really make all the difference. Oranges and reds really makes all the difference. And then the last sock set I have is brand new, brand spanking new to me ooh, from The Kinetic Knitter. And this was her Valentine sock set. Oh, it's called Moody Valentine. And it was the only sock set all of Val in all of the Valentine's collections. It's the only sock set that I wanted. So I'm glad I finally got it. The last thing we have to go through is my mini set basket. So it lives up here. I'm trying to only buy enough mini sets that will fit in this basket. No more than that. I do have one on the way, but I'm probably gonna have to break one of these out and use it soon. What we have here are mini sets mostly from Playful Day Yarns and from Little Lion Head Knits. We have the first mini set I bought from Playful Day Yarns, which is this one. It is called uh, With Fun and Cheer. And then the second set I bought from Playful Day, I bought uh, one of her, her mystery minis and she sent me this one, a set of mystery minis, this color right here, just really does it. And then I just recently bought this mini set from her, which is the, I don't remember the name of it and there's not a tag on it, but this is her, oh my God, look at this. I bought it specific, like mostly for this color. Then I ordered a, this isn't in order by the way, not like chronological order. I'm just pulling them out of the basket from top to bottom. This is the mini set I bought from Bird Street Yarn called the Great Outdoors set, and I could not resist this. I tried to get a full skein of this one too, and uh, didn't get there in time. He sells out really fast, or they sell out really fast. Worth paying the shipping from the UK to get this here. <laughs> the last two I have are from Little Lionhead Knits. This is the Autumn Woods sock set, or sock set, mini set. Gorgeous. And then I also bought one of the winter ones. This is the Winter Mornings mini skein set because this was also like somehow this is exactly me and this is also exactly me. I don't know how. I don't know how she does it, but everything she does is perfect for me. And I think that's it. I think that's my entire stash. Oh, there's an extra cone back there that I forgot to mention that's cotton as well. Well, that was it. That was my entire stash. That was a lot. I feel like that was probably a really long video. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you being so cute? Are you still being so cute? Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I'm going to eat some lunch. I'm going to paint some because I've been working on some art and put my yarn shelves back together. And I will see you next time.